So what we're going to be looking at today is springs in series and also springs in parallel. Now, if we were to add or to attach two springs together of two spring constants, let's say K1 and K2, there will be a resulting spring constant when we're going to call that K total. Now, this combination of springs will act like a single spring of the following spring constant, which is given by the equation that 1 over k total is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. The easiest way to calculate this will just simply to rearrange in terms of kt, which will be 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 raised to the power of minus 1. So this is the equation that we're going to be using whenever we have springs in series. Now, additionally, we also have an equation for springs in parallel. If we have an object that's attached to two springs which are positioned in parallel, as shown in this figure, then the total spring constant, k total, is going to equal k1 plus k2. Notice that those two rules are completely the opposite in comparison to adding resistors in series and parallel. Okay, now where do those two equations actually come from? So let's derive them. So I'm going to just write down a little derivation over here and let's think about each of those situations. In the first instance, we have one mass, and let's say that this mass is m, so there will be a downward force acting, which will be mg. Now, this force, mg, acts both on spring number one and on spring number two. It's also important to note that in this derivation, we're assuming that the springs are totally massless. In practice, that's not such a bad assumption because in uh, general, the mass of the object is substantially larger compared to the masses of the individual springs. Okay, now, so we're going to have a force acting on uh, spring number one and on spring number two. Let's just use Hooke's law for both of those springs. So for Hooke's law, remember, says that for the force acting on it, on the spring, is equal to kx. So what I'm going to say is that, let's say that this extension here is x1, and uh, this over here is k1. So in other words, mg is going to equal k1 x1 for spring number one. And the extension of just the first spring, well, that's simply going to be mg divided by k1. Let's do exactly the same procedure, but simply applied to uh, our spring 2. So the same force is going to equal k2x2. So mg is going to equal k2x2. And I'm finally, I'm just going to rearrange for x2. And what I'm going to get is that this is equal to mg over k2. Okay, so now we have an expression for the individual displacements. So x1 is how much essentially will spring 1 extend, and x2 is the amount by which uh, spring 2 is going to extend. Okay, well, let's find an equation for the overall force acting on the combination of the two springs. So for the overall equation, we have the same force. There's only one force acting in, in all those cases here. That's going to equal the total spring constant, which I'm going to say, which I'm going to name k total. And this is going to equal to x1 plus x2. Now, the overall force acting on the system is equal to mg. So mg is going to equal k total. And I'm just going to substitute those expressions 
into there. So x1 is going to go in there, x2 is going to go in there. So this is going to equal to mg over k1 plus mg over k2. And now we can see that this expression is already starting to look like, like the formula that we're trying to derive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide um, all sides of the equation by mg. And what we're going to see is that those guys are going to cancel. So I'm going to get 1 is equal to k total. 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. And finally, I'm just going to bring uh, the uh, total spring constant onto the other side. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by k total. Now what I'm going to get is that 1 over kt is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2, which is the expression that we've been trying to derive. Okay, folks, so this is the derivation for the equation for springs in series in which the total spring constant is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 plus any more, if there are any more springs present, all of it raised to the power of minus 1. Now, let's have a look at the case in which we have two springs in parallel. Okay, now when we're looking at the case in which the springs are in parallel, there's one important thing that we need to really, really mention, and that is that the extension of the of these of both of these springs is exactly the same. We're going to call that extension x. We cannot have k1 having, let's say, a larger extension because that means that this whole box would then be tilt it. So if one was to have more of an extension than the other, the box will have to be tilted, which is not the case. Okay, so uh, let's say that I'm just going to write it over here that in this case, both springs have the same extension. And I'm going to call that extension just x. Okay, well, the first spring is going to have some amount of force that we don't really know, and we're going to call that just uh, F1, and that's going to equal, let's say, K1 times X. And the second spring is also going to take a certain amount of force, depending on the stiffness of the spring. I'm going to say that this is equal to F2, which is going to equal to K2 multiplied by X. Now, all we need to do really is think about the total force. Now, the total force, which is, let's say that the total force is just F acting downwards. Some of it goes into the first spring, F1. Some of it goes into the second spring, F2. Now, um, the overall force is going to equal the overall spring constant multiplied by X. but F is going to have to be the sums of F1 plus F2. So let's just write that down. So F1 plus F2 is going to equal K total multiplied by X. Now F1 is this guy over here and F2 is K2 times X. So I'm just going to substitute those out. And what I'm going to get is that K1 times X plus F2 is k2 times x is going to equal to k total times x. Notice that I can now cancel out those extensions and what I'm left with is that k1 plus k2 is equal to k total which is exactly what we wanted to prove in this case. Okay, folks, so hopefully now those uh, two equations make sense. We know where they come from, which is really, really important. And this may come up in an exam situation. Remember, if we have two springs in series, so one spring in contact with the other spring, they're attached uh, one, right at one right after the other then we get that 1 over the, the total spring constant is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 plus more if there are more springs. And we have the derivation over here that we've gone through. If we have springs in parallel, k total is going to equal k1 plus 
K2. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below. Thank you very much.